Hmm. I'm going to need something special for this review. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Hello, my fellow YouTubers and subscribers, and welcome to my review of Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Dun, da, 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 dun, da, da. So, with the release of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny in about a month's time, I thought it was a good idea to revisit the first four movies after not having seen them for quite a while. Some of you who have been long-time subscribers may recall I did review the Indiana Jones movies about seven years ago when I was much younger, but suffice to say I've, I've developed a better review style now, I've developed HD reviews, and my opinions on the movies may have changed since then. Plus, it will be more consistent when I actually get the Dial of Destiny review up. So yeah, and as a lot of you know, I'm not particularly looking forward to <laughs> Indy 5, but we'll see how it goes. So the movie was released in 1981. It was directed by Steven Spielberg and stars Harrison Ford and Karen Allen. The plot of Raiders of the Lost Ark is as follows. In 1936, archaeologist and adventurer Indiana Jones is hired by the US government to find the Ark of the Covenant before the Nazis can obtain its awesome powers. So, would I call myself an Indiana Jones fan? Yes, this movie is great. <laughs> There's no question about it. It won four Oscars, and it is a great movie. I really enjoy Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's definitely up there as one of the best, not only Indiana Jones movies, but also one of the best action movies. This movie pushed the boundaries in terms of practical action stunt work and effects. It really is a great demonstration of, of how sometimes CGI can be really detrimental to uh, a movie. <coughs> Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. <coughs> Cough. <coughs> but in all seriousness, Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, this is just a ton of fun. It's such a fun movie to watch. Great adventure. It may not have as much depth as some films, but it's there to be enjoyed as a fun two-hour romp, and it does its job very, very well. First thing to say is Harrison Ford, as in the nails the character. It really is impressive how iconic this character became after this film. There are so many great moments. He's got the charm, the charisma, and he's just got it. He just is the character, particularly in the moment where he is revealed in the jungle, and as he steps out of the darkness and into the light, and he's got that kind of mysterious look on his face, and he uses his whip and his gun in several situations, and he always seems to get himself into a physical skirmish, but somehow manages to get himself out. Harrison Ford is funny, enigmatic, particularly great in the action scenes. You can tell he cares about the character, and he's put a lot of passion into this role. And I really like his romance with Marion, played by Karen Allen. Karen Allen is great. You know, Marion is just a great character. She has a lot of spunk, she's headstrong, she can fend for herself, she sticks up for herself, she knows right from wrong, and she's not afraid to, to challenge Indy, which I think is very important. She does become a damsel in distress at points, obviously, which is the only downside to her character. That being said, they prove that she is a badass, regardless of that, and she... She puts up a good fight, and I love her banter and her arguments with Indy, and the romantic scene on the boat where they finally make love <laughs> is, uh, is a particularly entertaining scene to watch. I would say John, John Reese davies deserves a mention as Salah. He is an ally to Indy, and he's a, very, he's a very nice character. He's just a lovely guy. He's just sort of a bumbling character. He has a family in Cairo, and he really helps Indy and Marion get to the next piece of the puzzle to finding the Ark of the Covenant. Denholm Elliott uh, as Brody is also a worthy choice. He's not really in the film that much, but he is good in the scenes he's in. The downside of the cast would have to be Belloc, or Bellend, as I call him, played by Paul Freeman. The actor is fine with what he has to do, but the villain is very underdeveloped, and he doesn't really have a strong motive <laughs> to want the Ark. He just kind of wants to open the Ark, and he wants to understand and harness its powers. So... Really, honestly, that's one of the slight disappointments about Raiders is that um, the villain, it just isn't, it's just not great. But that's a common thread throughout all the Indiana Jones films I've found is that they all don't have the best villains, but I'll go more into that when I review the other films as well. The action in this film is on another level. Every sequence has been thoroughly thought out. 
you know, planned meticulously. There's some fantastic sequences. One of my favorite action scenes is definitely the truck chase. That's definitely one of the best Indiana Jones moments. Just the physical weight of the action is so impressive. This is why the Indiana Jones films are successful. Because when you watch the action, it hurts. You feel the brutality. You feel the pain that Indy goes through during these sequences. And, you know, whenever he has to kind of sort of get so far down to then come back and then regain his strength and then beat up the, the villains. And it's impressive. You know, Harrison Ford is fit and he proves it with this film. I love the uh, sequence with the with the revolving plane where he's fighting that massive guy with the muscles. There's also a fantastic bar fight which involves a big fire in Marion's bar because obviously when Indy goes to see Marion, she's less than pleased to see him and he tracks her down in the pool to her bar where she works. And there's a great sequence there. There's also a long section in Cairo as well where there's quite a lot of action and I think all the action, again, is fantastic. And the pace of this movie is brilliant. You know, it goes at such a quick rate. You don't really need to pay attention too much to understand the story. Because the story is very basic. It really is easy to understand, easy to follow. You can have fun with it. That's that's all you need to do with this film is have fun with it. The opening is very good as well. Like I've already mentioned about Indy's introduction. But I love the whole sequence in the temple where he's with Satipo. And they're going to get this idol and then, who actually, Satipo's played by Alfred Molina, funnily enough. And the two of them, uh, well, let's just say, get caught in a difficult situation. And the escape from the temple is a very fun sequence to watch. <laughs> that, that's for sure. It is directed really well. Spielberg knows exactly what to do. He hits all the right beats. I do think the film does lack a little bit of depth. But that's, you know, that's forgivable because of what this is. It's just a fun adventure. It doesn't need as much depth. But it would have been nice to have a little bit more emotional depth at times they do go into a little bit of the backstory with Indy and Marion and how they had a previous relationship and now they're kind of rekindling that relationship so the romantic element I guess is where the sort of sentiment comes into the story and the Nazis are serviceable villains they definitely pack a punch <laughs> in this movie that's for sure however I do have to confess I don't think the film is perfect I do think there's anything that lets the movie down other than Belloc or Bellend is the ending. The ending, I feel, is quite anticlimactic. It's a little bit rushed. Because if you think about it, Indy and Marion don't actually do anything in the climax of the story. They are restrained. They are tied up. And all the villains do is open the arc, and then the powers of the arc, well, kill them. I mean, spoiler alert, but it kills them. Granted, we get some very impressive practical effects with the face melting, and that's this movie's credit, that all the practical stunt work and effects are sensational. But in terms of the script, it just feels to me a bit anticlimactic. I feel like Indy should have done something. I feel like Marion should have done something. I, you know, Indy and Belloc could have had a, a fight. You know, they could have they could have fought it out for the arc. You know, why couldn't we have something a little bit more you know impressive? I'm not saying the film isn't impressive. It is impressive on a number of levels, but the ending definitely could have had more to it than what it was. Indy and Belloc could have had a fight. Marion could have fought him or something. And Indy and Marion could have tried to close the arc and save them before they died, but I, I don't know. Something which involved Indy or Marion or both of them doing something heroic. Because they they essentially can't do anything at that moment because they're tied up. All they have to do is close their eyes and that's it. Also, I can't let this review pass without talking about John Williams and his fantastic soundtrack. That soundtrack is just so iconic, and you cannot help but hum to it every time you listen to it. Dun, 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 dun. And I just love that music and the way that it all fits together. You know, it's 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 so brilliant. One of my favorite moments in the whole franchise is um, the guy who spins the sword around, and then Indy just picks the gun and shoots him. <laughs> it's brilliant. It was it's just so brilliant because. How else would he have got out of that situation? Absolutely love it. On a cinematography level, it's pretty good, and the movie looks very impressive, and I watched it on Disney Plus in 4K, and my god, the restoration is good. <laughs> it really is. And it really was kind of a breath of fresh air in terms of action movies. People say that Jaws was responsible for the whole summer blockbuster thing, and yeah, I can kind of see that, but I also think Spielberg kind of predated that with this. He really brought those kind of big style, big blockbuster action adventure movies back with this movie and this movie is a staple of its time and it's iconic, it really is. It could have been made today but if it was made today it wouldn't have been as good because they would have relied on computers <laughs> to do its job which is well what I'm hoping the new film hasn't done but we'll see what happens. 
So overall, Raiders of the Lost Ark is a great movie. Is it my favourite indie movie? Not so sure. I do think it's one of the best of the series, and definitely a fantastic start to what is going to be a fantastic series of films. No question, Harrison Ford was born to play this role. There's great characters, great chemistry with the characters, fantastic action. Simple plot, but works for what it is. So overall, I'm going to give Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark a very strong 9 out of 10. Can't quite call it perfect. A couple of flaws I have with that, but there we are. Next time, I'm going to be reviewing the, well, it's technically a prequel, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, which is the second movie released three years later in 1984. So stay tuned for that one. And please hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you very much all for watching. And until next time, I'm Pajak's Perspective. See ya. Bye for now.